Hello YouTube and welcome back to What The Math. Today we're doing chapter 9 and we're finishing probability. This time we're talking about laws of probability and specifically we're going to be looking at conditional probability which is right here on the left and independent events which are on the right. So we're looking at these two topics and this is probably one of the more challenging topics because it does involve some formulas. So let's take a look at the first formula. And this is the first formula. This is actually, it's called addition law or probability addition law. And what it says is this. So if you have two events, A and B, probability of having A or B equals to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. Okay, sounds complicated. Let's look at this as a picture, as a Venn diagram so that it's a little bit more clear. So I'm going to draw a Venn diagram right here and explain to you what this means and why it's like this and not in any other way. Uh, because we're actually used to seeing this a little bit differently. Before when we were using Venn diagrams that had two different events, let's so just say this is A right here and this is B right here and this is U. Uh, what we were looking at is we knew that we know that from Venn diagrams um, A or B is essentially uh, a combination of this, this, but also this. This is what we call uh, this junction. And so let's just give these two, three parts a name. Part A, part B, and part C. So we know that Venn diagram wise, this was always A plus B plus C because this is uh, an inclusive disjunction. Uh, and to make this a, a an exclusive disjunction, we had to change our sign. This had to be a different sign. Specifically, it had to be a sign that kind of looked like this. This was an exclusive one where you either have A or B, but not both. Now, here's the thing. In probability, when we say either or either A or B, we're actually talking about this as well. So this is an important difference here. So basically, what this means is, so let's just say, let's actually look at some numbers here. And specifically, I'm going to use an example of playing cards. So here's some playing cards. And this card right here is going to be, this is a king of, just say king of hearts. This is a king of hearts. And we know there are 52 cards in total. Um, and there are four different suits. So we have hearts, diamonds, spades, which I think are drawn like this. And then we have clubs, which are kind of like this. So there are four different types of cards. And we also know that there's actually 13 different cards. So there's actually 13 different types of cards. Uh, and if you multiply 13 by four, you will get 52. So this total, total cards is 52. So let's look, look at an example here. Let's actually look at an example where we're trying to find out, uh, well, here's the question. Here's the question. And the question is, uh, I want to find a probability of having either a heart or a king. Either a heart, which is right here, or a king, which is right here. Now, if we were to use a Venn diagram, what we would do is obviously put these on the Venn diagram and then look at combination of this, this, and this. However, for probability, it doesn't work the same. So here, this is what we're going to be doing, and I'll explain it to you why it doesn't work the same. So, so what is the probability of getting a heart? And I'm going to put the heart right here. Well, we know there are 13 different cards with a heart. That will give us 13 out of 52. 13 out of 52 probability of getting a heart. What about a king? So let's draw a crown. So what is the probability of getting a king? Well, four kings, 52 cards, four out of 52. And now we're only missing the middle part. Now the middle part is this, the middle part is probability of getting a king of hearts. King of hearts, well, how many other? There's only one, right? So that's really one out of 52. Right here, we have one out of 52. So now let's look at this um, from both perspectives. So first perspective is old perspective where we just use um, the, uh, basically all three areas together. So here, if you, if you look at it this way, it will give us probability of 13 plus one plus four divided by 52, which is, I believe, 18. 18 out of 52 probability of getting either a heart or a king. But here's the problem. We're actually counting king of hearts twice here because if you look at these two circles, because they're intersecting right here, 
because of this intersection, you're actually counting a card twice. You're counting a ca uh, king of hearts when it's a king, and because there is uh, four kings here, so you're counting in here, and then you're counting it again when it's a heart. So it's actually counted twice. So you do have to follow this particular formula to try to find the actual probability of either a king or a heart. And let's do this on the right side right here. So this is actually wrong. This is incorrect. So is this. We're going to be using this formula. So probability of either a king, I'm going to change it to heart or king equals to, so it says here probability of A, so probability of heart plus probability of king minus probability of both heart and king. And if you calculate this, what you'll get is this is 1352. This is 452, and now minus 152, which will give us 16, 16 out of 52. And that is the real answer. So the real answer is 16 out of 52 chance of getting um, either a heart or a king. So essentially, you need to be able to remember this. This is one of the rules of probability. And so this is one of the laws that you have to try to remember. So essentially what it says is this. If you have a probability of two events, probability of having either one of these events is probability of event number one plus probability of event number two minus probability of both events happening together. And that's really how this works. With one little exception, and the exception is right here. I'll draw it for you. And the exception is this. Uh, what if you have two circles that are not connected? Essentially, it is two events that are mutually exclusive. This is what we call mutually exclusive. And when they're mutually exclusive, it's actually a little bit easier. You're basically looking at probability event A or probability of event B. And what it equals to is essentially, it's the same thing, but except that this part the middle part will be actually zero. So it's it's really this. Probability of A plus probability of B. And that's really the answer. So when two events are mutually exclusive, prob probability of either one of them happening is sum of the first probabilities plus sum of the second probabilities. And so that's another example of additional law when you have two mutually exclusive events. And this was the first part uh, and the first rule. And the second rule is right here this is number two and this is called a conditional event or conditional probability this is something that we actually did in class trying to read how uh, or basically trying to learn how to read this particular notation so when you have like a little bar in, in between two letters and how do we read this well this is how you read this you can say two things you can either call this uh, probability of a given b uh, given b or a better way of reading this would be probability of probability of a occurring knowing that b has occurred so in other words we're looking at probability of this knowing that this has already happened so uh, a depends on b depends on b and the formula for this is written right next to it so it's essentially uh, probability of both events happening dividing, divided by probability of B. So, all right, so let's take a look at an example just to make this a little bit clearer. And, and we're going to use cards again because it's a little bit easier. So here is how we're going to do this. We're going to be picking the same card again. So it's king of hearts. I'm going to draw my badly drawn king. And this is the question right here. So what is the probability of king occurring knowing that a heart has occurred? In other words, if I pick a random card and it's a heart, what is the probability that it's actually a king? What is the P of, I'm going to use hearts and, and crowns again, P of crown. So what is the probability of king occurring if I if a, if a heart has occurred? So what is the probability of, uh, of this being a king if I pick a card of hearts? In other words, I pick a random card, I see that it's a heart suit. 
what is the chance, what is the probability that it's actually a king? Now, you can obviously enter this right away, but let's do it using this formula so that you can actually see how this works. From the previous example, we know that uh, probability of both of them occurring, probability of A and B, was 1 out of 52 because there's only one king of hearts. So this is this part. This part, I'm going to use orange for this, this part, probability of B. So what is the probability of, what is our B? Probability of hearts. What is the probability of getting a heart? Well, probability of getting a heart is 1 in 4. Or essentially, you can also rewrite this as 13 out of 52. Okay, so that's that's what we have so far. Now, what is the probability of A knowing that B has occurred? So essentially this. What is the probability of this happening? And the answer is what well, you have it here. It's the first number, one, 1 divided by 52, divided by the second number, which is this, 13 divided by 52. If you remember how the division of, the, uh, of fractions works, you can basically switch these and multiply it afterwards. Essentially, what I'm saying is you have this. This will be the same as 1 divided by 52 times, times the flipped version of this. 52 divided by 13. Now, this can be crossed out right away. This is crossed out, crossed out. And what you get is you get 1 out of 13. And that's our probability. So probability of king occurring if you pick a heart is 1 out of 13. And that, that kind of makes sense. There's a total of 13 um, cards that have heart on it. And the probability of it being a king is 1 because there's only one king. So that's the answer. Now, what if I don't care if it's hearts? What if it's B is actually not important? So what is the probability of picking a king if I don't actually care about B? Let's just say if it's not B. Don't care about it. Well, what is it? What is the probability of picking a king? Well, it's actually just probability of picking a king. It's essentially, I think, what was it again? It's a 1 out of 4. No, 1 out of 13. It was 1 out of 13. There's uh, 4 kings in there. And so essentially, this is it. This is actually the formula from the book as well. Um, and specifically refers to independent events. So if you want to find out, and we want to find out this, this particular event. So what is the probability of having A or B? What is the probability of having A or B when events are independent? Well, it's just this. It's really just probability of A times probability of B. It's it's really that simple. Uh, and this one, it's uh, even though it sounds a little bit confusing, you just have to remember that it, it refers to independent events. And we're going to take a look at one last example just so you can kind of see what this means. This is independent events, and the probability is just multi. Uh, it's a product of two different probabilities, you have to just multiply them. And let's finish with, by using this example. This is from page 24 and example 27. So very easy question. You have two probabilities here. They're, they're given to us right here. There's probability A, which is one half, and probability B, which is one third. And you have to find probability of A or B. This is A or B. Remember, this is, this is read as or. If A a and B are mutually exclusive, so this was the first topic, or A and B are independent, this is the topic we just did. So let's look at this. So um, first of all, let's start with A. Question A, so mutually exclusive means that we have two probabilities, one is right here, one is right here, A and B, and we're looking at probability of having A or B. Well, if you remember correctly, um, the probability of A or B when they're mutually exclusive was just probability of A plus probability of B, which is one second plus one third, which will give us five, six. And so this is the answer right here for question A. And now question B, well, this one is a little bit more tricky because you have to remember, we're looking for um, A or B probability of A or B, and probability of A or B, no, doesn't matter if it's dependent or independent, always equals the same thing. It always equals to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. And we do have this, and we do have this, we just don't have this yet. 
And this is where the last formula from independent events comes in handy, because we also know that probability of A and B for independent events is simply probability of A times probability of B, which is essentially half times third, which is going to give us one six. And so the answer to this is, uh, what's well, really this, it's five six minus one six, which will give us four six. And that is the answer for question B. All right, and that's it for probability chapter nine. Hopefully this was a little bit more clear. I know this last part is a little bit heavy, but you do